Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and uh, I got a question for you guys. What the hell do you want Nintendo to do in 2022? In fact, what five things do you wish Nintendo would do this year? Let me know down in the comments because that's exactly what we're talking about today and the five things I wish Nintendo would do here in 2022. Now, before I get into my list, I want to let you guys know, hey, we got giveaways going on right now. Uh, if you want to enter in those giveaways or find out what they are, we got multiple of them happening at this exact moment. Head down into the pinned comment or the description to find out more information. Also, <coughs> Subscribe, drop a like, leave a comment, and let me know your five things you wish Nintendo would do. Let's get into my list, though, without further delay. Number one, create a consistent and reliable retro game release schedule. Seriously, how hard is this? Um, Nintendo's been doing this Nintendo Switch online service thing for a while, and you might go, man, you know what? I would swap out Nate's number one with saying, I wish Nintendo would launch a true traditional virtual console. And I can understand that, but that's not my wish list. My wish list is keep the current service going, but give us a consistent release schedule. You see, ever since they added the NES and SNES, Nintendo has been extremely inconsistent in how games are added to the system. We don't know when games will be announced, and we don't know when they will release, and we know, at this point, we're probably not getting them every single month because that's not what's happened with the service so far. And while it's happened at least kind of, sort of, with the N64 and Genesis, is it going to continue? Probably not. There's going to be a time that it doesn't. What I want to see Nintendo do is dedicate a day of the month, whether it's like the first Friday of every month, the second Tuesday of every month, the opening Sunday of every month, whatever day they choose, keep it consistent every single month and announce at least two to three new games coming that month to the Nintendo Switch Online service, be it for NES, SNES, N64, Genesis, or more, and then give us the release day that those games are going to arrive. Nintendo already knows what games are coming to the service over the next six months. Actually being able to tell your current subscribers that are paying lots of money, especially those that are paying that year subscription, being able to give them the peace of mind of knowing, here's the one we're going to announce, and this is when you're going to find out when they're coming, would be a godsend let me tell you other platforms do this playstation network has a dedicated day that they're going to announce their games games with gold from xbox is a dedicated day they're going to announce their games why can't you i don't understand why we can't have this sort of consistency uh and it, it just it goes a long way to peace of mind and also at least letting people know that every month we're going to get something because that's part of being consistent is actually getting things every month and not piecemealed one game at a time randomly. We are halfway through January. We still don't know when Banjo-Kazooie is coming out. They announced we were getting Banjo-Kazooie for the Switch Online service last month. We're halfway through the month and it's not here yet. And it's not that it's not here yet. It's that we don't even know when it's coming. That's a problem. A problem that shouldn't exist in 2022. So the second thing on my Nintendo wish list of 2022 is that Nintendo releases a massive system update that completely overhauls the Switch UI, including the Nintendo Switch eShop. Now look, I could spend an entire video talking about the Nintendo Switch eShop. In fact, I have. Uh, and all I could say there is, hey, you know what? Make it more Netflix-like. Give us a Netflix-like homepage with suggestions based on games you've played or bought. Uh, organize things better by their genres. Push newer games more than old older ones, but also suggest older ones, uh, you know, implement some sort of user review system, whether it's a thumbs up or thumbs down, bare minimum, like give us some sort of user feedback to control quality control games. And yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And, and that's just basic uh, what, what pretty much everything does. Uh, Netflix has really nailed it. So I don't know why Nintendo doesn't take note of that. Uh, but also the UI in general, there's a reason every time any of us Nintendo YouTubers grab a fan-made UI screenshot and we put it in a thumbnail that those videos get thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of clicks because there are millions of Nintendo Switch owners waiting for Nintendo to actually give us a new Switch UI. Seriously, it's in the title for crying out loud because that's 
how big of a deal this is. We want folders. We want more information on the games, maybe even quick looks at our game save files before we enter the game so we remember where we were in the game and if we want to continue from that spot without having to load it up right away. We want to obviously have more organizational methods, uh, more options on, hey, what if I own a thing physically and digitally? Uh, I want an option on which one I'm playing um, for some reason. I, I don't know, like, just themes as an example, you know, an option to eventually add menu music and there's just so much we want to see done with this UI and fans have created so many UI concepts that are better than the current switches, which is very simple and is very basic and they did give us a little bit of extra organizational methods, but I really think it can get to that next level and truly feel like a modern UI. I think it just needs a few tweaks, a few additions, maybe even a total overhaul and that is on my wish list at number two for 2022. Third on my wish list is something that I think a lot of people might want, especially some of us more you know older gamers like me. I feel one of my gaming grandpa over here and that is bringing back classic IP. So we're talking about a new uh, I, I don't know, a new wave race, a new, what, snowboard kids, F-Zero, right? Uh, a, 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 a new, I don't even know, even new Star Fox at this point, although we just had Star Fox Zero on Wii U. The point is, I want to see these new games coming for old IPs, treating it almost like a pseudo reboot of the franchise. As an example, Star Tropics, there was a Star Tropics 2, but you don't need to name this next one Star Tropics 3 or Star Tropics 2.5 or just call it Star Tropics. Bring the franchise back, you know, take elements of the prior two games, implement it in a new way for a rebooted series and give us a modernized version of the game. Like, I think there are so many classic IPs Nintendo could bring back that Nintendo Switch is a platform that's showing that almost anything that's quality is going to sell very well on this platform, even some things that aren't quality. Now's the time when all your development teams are making things for one system, and I know we don't need those games this year, but 2023, 2024, you know, there's many, many years of gaming ahead for Nintendo. Bring these series back, and you might find fruits of doing so that could set the, 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 the wheels in motion to get us to get these games out more frequently because the demand might actually exist. How do we know an F-Zero isn't going to sell well when we haven't seen an F-Zero since the GameCube days? Like, let's, let's go. Let's get on top of this. Let's try it again. You got nothing to lose. You're making money hand over fist. Now's where you get experimental. Obviously, I want new IPs, but my, my wish list is bring back some of those classic IPs that Nintendo seems to have forgotten. All right, this next one might be seen as a little more controversial, but this is my wish list. You are already giving me yours down in the comments. Uh, I want to see them discontinue the current version 2 Redbox Switch and then take the Switch OLED, white version, neon version, I don't care, and reduce the price by $50. So it is de facto now a $300 system that becomes the base Switch unit. Because let's be realistic about what the Switch OLED is, right? This Switch OLED here gives you that better kickstand and, you know, gives you the OLED screen and a few other minor improvements. And the thing is, those improvements are nice. I'm glad that we have them. But also, it's still the same Switch underneath everything as the version 2 switch it makes this switch makes the version 2 switch redundant yeah it's not more powerful but it's better in every way there's not any th reason to really buy the original switch besides availability and I guess it's $50 cheaper, but it probably shouldn't be. This should be the same price. And I think if we eliminate that version, we will get a, a, a same price switch OLED. Now, beyond all of that, there's actually a benefit to Nintendo to do this and a benefit to consumers besides, obviously, only two models in the market. Manufacturing. Nintendo admitted coming into this year, they knew they weren't going to be able to make enough switches at the beginning of the year. You know what would help that? Streamlining your manufacturing. What would help you streamline your manufacturing? Get rid of a redundant system. What's one of your redundant systems at the moment? Switch version 2 Redbox Edition. It's redundant. It's not any more powerful or any different. This is better in every single way. So focus on this. Eliminate that. Get all of your lines working on this. You do that, and suddenly you might be able to increase production because you're not split between making different versions of Switch that are the exact same thing. All right? All right, Nintendo, this actually can, like, kill multiple birds with one stone, so to speak. Not that you're trying to kill birds with stones, although the woodpeckers that peck in my house, let me just say, if it was legal for me to chuck rocks at you, I would. <laughs> 
Stop putting holes in my siding. Dang it. And no, I've had my, my house inspected. We don't have bugs in the walls, so... I don't know. And maybe they like the taste of the damn wood paneling that we need to replace. So that beats the hell out of me. Now, this last point is one that we're not going to get to know soon. This is something that has to happen now, but we're not going to see the fruits of it for a while. And I'm okay with that. And that is, dear Nintendo, the fifth thing I wish for you in 2022, pay attention to what's happening in modern technology. I'm, I'm, I'm talking across the board here from online account systems happening at Microsoft and Steam and, and PlayStation and everywhere else. I don't care. Even take tips from, from good old games or tips from Epic Games. I don't really care. But just pay attention to modernized account systems and the features that, that, that fans are actually liking and enjoying and using. Pay attention to the fact that people you know might like achievements. I'm not a big achievement person, but maybe I would be if Nintendo games had achievements. I don't know. So I'm just saying, like, it's okay to pay attention to what works and what doesn't work from other companies and incorporate that into your services because just doing your own thing and thinking you know better hasn't actually proven to be true, right? Beyond that, beyond that, pay attention to technology on the whole, of course, right? Like, we're talking about everything. So from software and accounts to Hey, how about actual hardware? Pay attention to what's happening at AMD and Intel and ARM. Pay attention to what's happening at NVIDIA. Pay attention to all of it. And I'm not saying that you don't. I'm saying that, you know, you were using PowerPC long after PowerPC was discontinued, only recently getting into a modern architecture that you took from a system that failed. And I'm glad that you were able to take the Tegra X1 that was originally made for the, the NVIDIA Shield that did, that flopped in the market and you were able to put it into a system and take use of it. I'm sure NVIDIA was thankful for that as well. But the thing is, it wasn't modern at the time that it came out. It quickly was surpassed within a year or two by other mobile th- chips. So I'm not saying that you always need to use the most up-to-date technology, but pay a lot of attention to what's going on out there. Uh, Because clearly the partnership with NVIDIA might have also happened because you weren't aware of what was coming, you know, in hindsight from AMD. Who knew the Ryzen and their GPUs were going to massively catch up? Who knew that was going to happen? Well, maybe you would have if you would have bothered to talk to them and actually tested out the technologies. So what I'm saying is be more aware and release the best possible system. Obviously, I would prefer to have backwards compatibility and everything. But if we don't get backwards compatibility, I don't think it's the end of the world. I just want you to pay attention to modern technologies. I don't need like you folks in a 4K, 8K, some crazy spec sheet. I'm just saying pay attention to what's current at the time. And as Steam Deck has proven, maybe try to get something out that's cost competitive and um, able to obviously provide a superior gaming experience. And that, and again, this wouldn't be coming for years, but you gotta be looking into it now. You can't just like decide on a whim. Oh, now we care. And let's get out of system now. No, no, no. You gotta start at some point. So I'm hoping in 2022, really hoping before 2020, 2022, but whatever. It's on my wish list. It's my wish list, damn it. You guys can have your own. Heck, did you know that like Joy-Con drift or like drift in general might not be a thing? Hello, the hall sensors. Look into that crap. Maybe implement that on a future platform. I don't know. Just saying, look into modern technology, pay attention to everything, and make smart business choices. Also consumer friendly ones. <laughs> Right, because we can't just worry about smart business choices because then, hey, Switch is perfect, right? I mean, it's all right. It's not bad. <laughs> I like it, of course. How many of these have I bought? Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. And I'll catch you guys in the next video, which uh, I don't know when it's going to be. It's a nice little weekend one. But I do know that I need to take my Switch here and... Uh, play some games after I'm done with this video because I got a lot of stuff that I, I want to catch up on. Really, what I'm hoping to dive into is Animal Crossing. I bought the DLC two months ago and I've yet to play the DLC. Like, what's wrong with me, man? I gotta, I gotta sit down and play some Animal Crossing after I'm done with this video. Alright, guys. Catch you guys later. Peace out. Peace. Peace. Yeah, peace out. Peace out.